Good day. This is uh, three to one exams, and we are taking on the subject economics. And the topic for today is the theory of supply. In our previous topic, we looked into the theory of demand, but demand is not complete until you apply supply because the quantity of commodities that consumers are interested, willing, and then ability, able to consume has to be supplied before they will demand for it. So that makes supply a very important topic going side by side with demand. On a clear clarity, very clear clarity, I want you to always find out, you are students envisaging and at the same time making a lot of a research. We had not less than 50 questions that were asked in this same topic. I told, one thing I know of, demand and supply is the two hobnob of economics when it comes to dealing with economics. That is why it has not been taken for granted, even to your university level. By the time you'll be dealing with uh, microeconomics analysis, you will understand what I'm saying here. So it's very essential for us to knowing the, 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 the background right now, understanding it, you know, the nitty gritties, so that by the time you get there, everything will just be at the palm of your finger. Now, the theory of supply, I told us that in the beginning of demand, I said they all have a relationship that I would refer to as inverse, inverse, inverse relationship. Now, let's look at demand and supply. Demand and supply has an inverse relationship. If you look at the way they function, why? Because demand is looking at supply will supply goods when the price of the commodity is higher. But demand will only purchase the commodity when the price is lower. So you can see the difference is there. However, we're going to be moving ahead and looking at so many things that concern us. On this note, we'll be looking at the objective that as students we are required to know so that uh, it will make uh, an easy way for us. The first one is identifying the factors determining supply. Identifying the factors that determine supply. Number two, interpre interpreting supply curve from supply schedule. Interpreting supply curve from supply schedule. Number three, differentiate between Change in quantity supplied and change in supply. Ability for us to differentiate between change in quantity supply and change in supply. Now compare the various types of supply and their interrelationship. There are various types of supply and how they are all being related together. Now the other one we'll be looking into here is relate the determinants to the nature of elasticity. You see elasticity is coming in here. That's why I told us when we're looking at the nature, the determinant, and then the measurement of elasticity under demand. I said this is one area we should not be taking for granted. Now you can see the word elasticity is also coming out. Now, if I may ask a simple question here, what is elasticity? Where is it being derived from? And how is it being applied in economics? Very simple questions. What is elasticity? Elasticity simply means the degree of responsiveness. Where is it being, de where is it being derived from? It is derived from the word elastic. Elastic is a rubber that is being used for, you know, for underwears. Yes. How is it being related to the topic, demand and supply that we are treating here right now? It is related to this particular topic in the sense that it tries to look at the attitude of consumers, both the producers and the consumers, towards the changes in the price of a particular commodity. Now, what is the dominant factor that is the influencer here? The influencer is the price. Suppliers will want to produce or supply more of a commodity when the price of the commodity is high. But demand, consumers will want to consume more of a commodity when that particular commodity, the price of the commodity, you see, whenever we are looking, we are talking, we are looking at the word price. Just imagine the, the, the definition of supply. The willingness and the ability of a producer or a supplier to supply a commodity at a given price and over a particular period of time the willingness and the ability, when the price of the commodity is, you know, is, is measurable to him making his own profit because the 
end point of every businessman or entrepreneur is to maximize profit. We saw all this in uh, business organization where we treated uh, the sole proprietorship, the partnership, private limited liability company, public limited liability company, you know, cooperative society, public corporation, and all, star, all, 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 all stuff. But one thing I want us to know is that the entrepreneur's main aim is maximizing profit. So this is where this is where the entrepreneur falls into under this supply. Now, we'll, we'll be looking at the next one, which is compute elasticity coefficient. Compute elasticity coefficient. We're going to be computing elasticity coefficient. We're going to be looking at the coefficients of elasticity. All these are all the highlights that our students will be able to note. I tell us one thing for sure, mark it. You will not have any problem in your 100 level when you follow this vividly. That's just the truth. I'm telling you from experience. Now, the, the other one is interpret the coefficient to real life situation. Interpret the coefficient to real life situation. Definition of supply. What is, the, what is supply? Just like demand. I will define demand now and I will not define supply so that we will not be able to marry the two of them. Look at how they are both being juxtaposed. You lay them side by side and then you can be able to, you know, know the, you know, the meaning. Now we say demand is the willingness and the ability of a consumer to purchase goods and services at a given price. You see, price is still there now. And over a particular period, let us not joke with price. Price is a function. Now, but what is supply? It says the quantity of any commodity that producers or suppliers are willing to offer for sale at a given price over a given period of time. At a given price over a particular period of time. It is the commodity that producers are able and willing to offer for sale at a given price over a particular period of time. Now, we're going to be looking at factors determining supply. Factors determining supply. There are so many factors that determine supply. Now, I'll be placing this side by side, just like I use the word just oppose. We'll be say, placing it side by side so that we can move along. These are very two important topics in economics that please pay a very keen attention to it so that you can understand it, how it is. From this, you can move on. Most of the topics always, re, always draw their references from these two topics. They draw their references, I repeat, from these two topics. I have been in this game for quite a while, so I know what I'm saying. Now, we talk about factors determining supply include. When we look at factors determining demand, the very number one factor was what? Price. Number two was what? Price of other commodities. Number three, income of the consumer. Number four, Population, number five, where, um, that's weather. Number six, we talk about taste and fashion. And number seven, government uh, policy. These are the main. There are other if you want to include. But on factors determining supply, number one factor is price. You can see what price is. Please don't joke with it. That is why when you see, no matter how they twist that particular question, one of the main determinant factor that is determining elasticity of price, elasticity of supply, don't even joke, it's price. Suppliers or producers are willing to supply and produce a particular commodity and offer for sale when the price of the commodity is high. That is why the curve of price uh, of supply has a positive elasticity of uh, you know, supply. The number two factor is level of technology. Hmm. This one is a very important one, the level of our technological advancement. The higher the price, the higher the quantity supplied. Then the level of technology. If the level of technology is high, then the level of production will be high. Example, I give example using the industrialized nations of the world today. Industrialized nations of the world, all the Scandinavian countries, they are all industrialized. All the Scandinavian countries. Example of the Scandinavian countries, Canada, Belgium, Norway, Iceland, Switzerland, um, um, what's it called? Canada, uh, Canada, the whole land, that's Netherlands. All these countries, their per capita income per person per annum is very high. 
Why? Because the level of technology of this country is high. Then you can now see that the level of production will be also high. Then the second, the, the third one is cost of production. Supply, when the cost of production is low, the supply of goods and services will be high. But when the cost of production is high, the supply of goods and services will be low because the cost of production is a predominant factor that affects supply. Please note this. I don't want to go into much details concerning this, but it's important. Then government policy. Government has brought up a lot of policies. You know, there, there's one that we talk about when we're looking at, about, uh, when we're looking at uh, um, uh, economic growth and development. We talk about needs, national ec economic uh, uh, growth and development strategy. Now, when we, when we look at that one, which took place between 2003 and 2007, government tried to encourage, bringing a policy to encourage industrialization. How does this play out? It plays out in the sense that when government policy supports the establishment of industry by removing subsidy or maybe reducing subsidy and then encouraging localized, you know, lo local industry to thrive, you can now discover that the supply of goods and services will also increase. So government policy is very important. Government policy is very important. Weather. Weather is another important factor. Season stroke weather is an so, you know, a important factor that affects supply. There are some commodities that are supplied based on season or weather. I give an example. You know, when we talk about the demand for commodity, we talk about weather. Then Nigeria has two main weather, the dry season and the rainy season. The weather of Nigeria determines that during the rainy season, there is harvest of crops. Therefore, the thriving for infant industries is highly being encouraged. Now, this one, this now necessitates the establishment or the, the, the production of goods and services. And then when there is, the weather will make the price of the commodity to be low. But when there is scarcity, then the weather, because of the weather, the weather will now make the price of the commodity to be high. And once there is an increase in the price of the commodity, cost of production will increase, and then the supply of goods and services will decrease. Please note all this. These are technical points. I don't know how I'm going to interpret, but this is the level at which I can simplify it to. You talk about weather. Then taxation. Taxation is another factor that affects supply. If government reduces taxation, then there is going to be an importation or influx of raw materials for establishment or for production. And this will increase the supply of goods and services. But when the goods are highly tasked, the economists use the word heavily tasked. If goods are heavily tasked, you can now see that it will discourage production because there, that will now hinder the importation or the production of this particular commodity because of a heavy taxation. Number of producers. Number of producers also results amounts to competition. The number of producers, if there's a, a, a keen competition and then the competition is a lively one, then it is one of the factors that determines supply. It's one of the factors that determines supply. So all these are all highlighted uh, factors. Natural disaster. Natural disaster also affects supply. One of uh, natural, we have human disaster and natural disaster. One of the human disaster that I'm going to be listing out here is if we look at uh, um, dry fish, we used to have a lot of dry fish that is being caught in Lake Chad Basin. And this dry fish is being, you know, sold to the hinterland of Nigeria to the southwestern part of the country, south, south, southeast. But as a result of national disaster, the war that is going on, you know, the, 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 the cultivation or the fishing of this particular, uh, in, the fishing industry in this particular area has reduced drastically. And that has affected the production of fish in that particular area. So natural disaster is also a factor that affects supply. If there is a natural, such as earthquake, pollution, environmental disaster, where there is air pollution, all these factors, whenever it thrives, you discover that it affects supply of goods and services. Now, the next one we'll be looking into is, we'll be looking into types of supply. Types of supply. Types of supply. Number one is composite supply.
composite supply, that is where supply is being done in more than one particular unit or aggregation. Then number two is joint or complementary supply. He said joint or complementary supply, it occurs when two or more commodities are produced and supplied from one source. When more than one commodity are produced and supplied, more than one, he said when two or more commodities are produced and supplied from one source, it is referred to as joint or complementary supply.